This is EG. This video is for younger viewers wanting, for whatever reason, to add muscle, hypertrophy, increase strength. But it's also applicable to females seeking healthy, sculptured figures, older people in general good health, actually anybody wanting to feel better. But first, let's do a little bit of fitness history. Now, stay with me. Back in the 1600s, most people of whatever class did not overeat or consume packaged sugar or sugar-laced foods. They didn't lack exercise because they walked almost everywhere, even the rich and well-born. Uh, many toiled on farms, women in the kitchen. Only rarely did they use transportation because horse-drawn carriages were expensive and they required quite a bit of effort to set up and disassemble. Powered vehicles, beginning with the railroads in this country and later automobiles, did not really transport that many people in any great numbers until about 1908 when Henry Ford began mass producing the Model T and also when city transportation like the electric elevator arrived, the first one in the 1890s, uh, the cable car, I think that appeared in 1873 in San Francisco, uh, the first electric trolley in, believe it or not, Richmond, Virginia, and that was in 1888, the subways in the early 20th century. So men and women prior to the early 20th century pretty much used muscle power to get around day to day. They also worked hard physically at their jobs, more so than today, even those doing domestic work. But by the 1920s, more Americans were living in cities than on farms, and they did far less walking and far less physical work, mainly because of labor-saving devices. And perhaps as important, they were eating calorie-heavy, prepackaged, nutrition-less, food. The result of all this was a health crisis, people getting fat, and the result of that was the birth of the fitness boom, exploited first by fitness and strength magazine publishers like Bernard McFadden, I've talked about him, Bob Hoffman, Joe Weider, there were many others, all offering advice, often contradictory advice, regarding nutrition and exercise. And all of their advice can be summarized, I'm talking about decades of advice, can be summarized minus the BS and minus the huckstering for worthless supplements in one short lesson, which I'll give you here. This is for someone young, usually, wanting strength and muscle, who trains chemical-free. Here you go. Point one. A bodybuilder does not need supplemental protein. When E.T. was young, both Hoffman and Weider and several other publishers of uh, those magazines offered the worst, the least assimilable soy protein powders. Now, let me note here for you uh, aficionados of this subject, powerlifting champion, later historian, Terry Todd, reported that he visited Hoffman at Hoffman's headquarters in York, Pennsylvania, and he saw the publisher holding a big canoe paddle and stirring that soy protein in a large tub. Now, many of us put out hard-earned money for products that they said were necessary to make gains, but products that were, in fact, less nutritious, less assimilable, than, say, milk, which contains casein protein. It's very slowly taken into the body, but it's a very good protein. Meat, eggs, fish. So, uh, you might want to heed E.T.'s advice, garnered from years of experience. Eat natural food, nutrition-rich food. It is cheaper, it tastes better, it works better. And remember this. For fastest gains in strength and hypertrophy, 
muscle size. You're going to need calories. Now this is of course for chemical free bodybuilders. And the result is going to be a bit of adipose fat accompanying that expanding muscle. Although strength and muscle size can be achieved while remaining fairly lean, but the gains are going to come much slower. Point two, set a four to six week program of progressive weight training using compound movements. By that I mean using exercises that require various joints to be put into motion. And keep a record of your progress. Make those exercises the heart of what you do. Those large muscle groups put into action by the bench press, the squat, the deadlift, maybe the clean and jerk, the front squat, will put weight and muscle on you fast. Do six to eight repetitions with all you got and follow that by a few single joint lifts if you want to. For instance, the triceps press. E.T. got his best gains with a very narrow gripped bench press. In other words, you hold on to the bar and you're lying on the bench. Your hands are actually touching each other and then you press up. It really works the triceps. Also, the calf raises. Your thighs, quadriceps, are going to be growing very quickly because of the squats, whichever variety you use. Uh, so you want your calves to uh, keep up, work them. And also the forearm curl or reverse curl. Another thing to remember under this point is warm up correctly. Uh, younger people have a, a real problem thinking they don't need to warm up. Well, everybody does. Now, experts disagree on how best to do this. A lot of you may have heard you should warm up maybe with 10 reps doing 50% of what you're capable of doing for a max. And well, I'm not going to tell you which way to do it, but I'll tell you how I did it. And I still use this, this technique. I started a very low weight. Let's say it's a bench press. E.T.'s last single was 225, so E.T.'s going to, I'm talking about pounds, E.T.'s going to start very low with, say, 40 pounds, and I'll do two repetitions. Wait 30 seconds, and then up it by 20 pounds until I get to about 190, and then we'll do two. Now I'm warmed up for that exercise whatever, you experiment with what works best for you. All I can tell you for sure is that without a warm-up, if you go right into your sets, the odds are you're going to, number one, experience an injury, and number two, you're not going to have the endurance that you otherwise would have with a warm-up. Another uh, thing to remember under this point is try to advance in something each workout. It may be an extra repetition. It may be an extra few pounds. It may be a little less rest between sets. Point three, do not overtrain. Remember both the central nervous system and the muscles require rest, sometimes a few days uh, during which rebuilding takes place. That rebuilding usually takes 48 hours, but it varies with individuals. And what kind of rest are we talking about? Six to eight hours per night of really good sleep. If you're really packing on the weight and making extremely quick gains, you may need a lot more. I read once that powerlifting great Pat Casey, who was the first to go over 600 pounds, for a bench press, was sleeping up to 12 hours a day. Consider taking a nap. And don't use those muscles again too hard during the rest period. Although, I got to mention here, doing physical work, moving the muscles in a different way, 
tends to be associated with hypertrophy and strength. John Grimmick, a former Mr. America and Olympic lifter, built his base doing heavy labor. Then at night he would go and uh, lift weights. And the same could be said of uh, Mr. Olympia and a former Cuban weightlifting champion, Sergio Oliva. Another thing to remember under this point, it was popular decades back for fitness enthusiasts to use the mantra, train through the pain. But most of them were engaged in a catabolic activity, long distance running, and thus were body demolishing. This becomes very clear when you compare the physique of a sprinter to a marathoner. But E.T. found that running sprints in college did add to oxygen efficiency, and that translated to much better workouts. But those were sprints. After completing your four-to-week cycle, consider no training at all for at least a week. The body requires an overall rest. Now, this is something that the Eastern Bloc nations understood back in the late 1940s. But it took the United States coaches decades to realize how important this was. Well, that's pretty much it. You do not need to go through decades of weightlifting publications. You do not need supplements, except maybe vitamin D. E.T. likes cod liver oil. This includes the pre- and post-workout drinks. You can make your own better than anything you can buy. Scientifically tested using uh, beets and arugula. Put it through a juicer, drink that before your workout. Uh, you'll have a considerable boost in oxygen efficiency. You don't need those powdered proteins. You don't need any of the hyped products. Remember, all the so-called gurus, those publishers, and today the ones you see on the internet that say they are natural, they make their living selling crap to aspiring health enthusiasts and bodybuilders. All you require is some object to push or pull against and ability over time to increase the tension. And you need a place to rest. And you need nutritious food. That's it. This is E.T. I hope this was informative. Like or dislike this video. Subscribe to the channel and share it with others on social media or just conversation, assuming people talk to each other face to face. I don't know. Thanks.